Cape Town Mayor Patricia Delo vows to clear her name, which she says has been tainted by her party. Her comments come after the High Court ordered her reinstatement as a member of the Democratic Alliance. Our reporter Nasi Pisame has the story. Relief for Cape Town Mayor Patricia DeLille and another blow to the Democratic Alliance. A full bench of the Western Cape High Court found the party violated its own constitution when it booted her out. The DA terminated the mayor's membership in May 2018, and this was after she stated in a radio interview she was prepared to resign. The determination by the first respondent that the applicant has ceased to be a member of the DA in terms of clause 3.5.1.2 of its federal constitution is declared to be unlawful and invalid and is reviewed and set aside with costs. Delil says the ruling is also a victory for the broader community of Cape Town. This victory today also sends out a very strong message that we have rights in this country and that we've got rights in our constitution and that no one is above the law and no one is above the constitution of this country. And as all political parties, we must learn from this lesson. I'm back in this court tomorrow because I had to bring an application within an application to force the DA to give me access to this evidence that they found me guilty on. They've refused up till now. The DA says it's considering taking the ruling on appeal. We'll be considering all our options, which include a, a possible appeal. Um, we certainly don't agree with uh, many of the points raised in the judgment as we feel our FLC was properly constituted. And we don't think it's in the best interests of the people of Cape Town to have this matter drawn out further. But we do need to see a full copy of the judgment uh, before we can make a decision as to where we're going forward. The ANC in Cape Town says the DA should rather focus on delivering services. The DA, in fact, has been going up and down, wasting money and resources to deal with one particular woman or individual because they, could, they, could, they failed to deal with her internally in the DA. Now, we're saying that they must stop doing this cats and dogs, um, uh, uh, fighting cats and mouse, and uh, just deal with the issue of delivering services to the Capetonians. Meanwhile, the court battles between Delil and the DA are not over. Delil asked the court to compel the DA to hand over evidence in the so-called Stenhazen report. Nasi Pisame, Afro World View, Cape Town. Mayor Patricia Delo may have won yet another round, but it seems there is no end to the saga. Delo is due back in court in a bid to secure evidence in the Steinhazen report. Meanwhile, the Democratic Alliance is reportedly mulling another motion against her. And joining us in studio is Dr. Jock Matthew Agai, a political analyst from Serve Leadership Development Institute, and legal expert Norwa Okwankwa via Skype. We'll be joined by Azania Matiwane from Friends of Patricia Delo. On the phone line, we have uh, Madam Mayor herself, uh, Patricia de Lille, and uh, we'll also introduce uh, other guests in a bit. So let's start with you, Madam Mayor, and uh, just following your threads on uh, Twitter saying that you re-energized uh, re and that this is an affirmation that you, the, the people of uh, Cape Town, primarily the poor, will now be uh, serviced and, and get uh, better quality service delivery. Just your mood at the moment. I've always put my faith in the independence of our judiciary and believe that I will only get justice and fairness before our court. And that's why I have been vindicated today. Yes, I've won this round today, but tomorrow there will be another round. Because the Democratic Alliance must now stop talking about all of these untested allegations, and they must tell the court tomorrow why are they hiding the evidence? Why don't they want to give me access to the evidence of all of these untested allegations? And my fight today, it is not just about me. It is about the rights that we enjoy today, that you are innocent until proven guilty, that we are all equal before the law, that we are all entitled to natural justice, because I want to show South Africans that we must never, never give up the fight for justice and fairness. 
What was this for you also about the fight to retain your DA membership? Or are you still adamant that it is entirely about clearing your name, or whom, which you feel the party had tainted? It's not either or. It's both. And it is about the human rights that we fought for in the country that we all enjoy today. It is about showing that we are all equal before the law. That those years, during the apartheid years, when people were put in jail for 90 days without trial, without a hearing, it's over. That in the new constitution, that we all have rights and that we must all claim those rights. So really, it's much, much bigger than just a fight uh, for Patricia DeLeau, because I can serve my country in any capacity. Will you continue? Let's say all uh, works out well, if, including uh, the appeal, if that fails uh, against the DA and your name is cleared according to your satisfaction, will you then resign? First of all, I've said it many a times over and over again. Because we must never uh, treat the struggle for human rights as if it's just a side issue. It's a principal issue. And I will design and decide on my future once I have cleared my name. And I've said it many times before, that your name, your integrity, your reputation is priceless. I cannot decide on a future while this cloud is still hanging over me. Even today, the DA repeated those same untested allegations, which they have refused to give me a copy of the evidence. That's why I have to be back in court tomorrow. So I wish that Africans can understand. It's not even an ego. It is about illustrating to South Africa that we live in this wonderful democracy, that we've got a wonderful constitution, a very progressive constitution, and that we must always be aware about our rights and we need to fight for those rights. You were saying that you can serve the people of South Africa in any capacity, uh, and I assume by that you mean, albeit uh, it, it may be outside the Demo Democratic Alliance, do you still find that the DA is your preferred political home? It is not about political home. It is not about um, what I want for myself. It is about the rights. It is about human rights. You know what? I was fortunate. And... I was fortunate to be first alive during the time when we were negotiating a settlement for this country, a peaceful settlement. I was there when we wrote the interim constitution and the final constitution. And really what I'm saying is that it's not a simple exercise. It's about principle. It's about justice. It's about fairness. And I just hope that Africans can understand that it's not about me. I want to show and I want to teach the rest of South Africa that we have got rights. And those rights must be respected and that we are all equal before the law. And that is why even tomorrow when I go back to court, this has cost me a fortune. I spend my own money because your name, your integrity is priceless. But what has happened now after the third court case which the judgment came today, the court has ordered that the Democratic Alliance must pay all my costs. So it was worth the while to make this investment to clear my name. Madam Mayor, we're going to have to leave it there and catch up Thank with you, you again so tomorrow. Godspeed, I appreciate Thanks you. Me. That's uh, a City of Cape Town Mayor Patricia DeLille on the phone line with us in studio. Norwa Okonkwo is a legal expert. We also have Dr. Jock Matthew Agai, political analyst from Server Leadership Development Institute. Thank you so much for your patience, gentlemen. Let's just start from a legal perspective, uh, Mr. Okonkwo, in what the Democratic Alliance would have to satisfy to the court for an appeal to be granted if they go that route. Well, it's an ex exercising of your right. If you feel that a judgment is biased or lacks merit, then you can put an appeal for relief to appeal the judgment on the following grounds. If we look at what has taken place today in the court, it was, it was a full bench that sat, meaning three judges, and looked at the merits of the secession clause application in her case to have withdrawn her membership and they cited 
that the procedure was procedurally wrong by the uh, setting up of the Federal Legal Commission of the DA. Therefore, what they cited as the decision clause to remove her membership does not have merit. So it's a, it's a restatement of her membership. Now, the other internal charges, which they are going to court tomorrow to hear on, will be on what they have come together as gathered evidence to have charged her, which has been asking them to provide, which she hasn't seen. So tomorrow, the court will make a demand on them to bring out this evidence so she can see. Remember, this is a woman who has been embattled in her party, both in her position and within the city of uh, uh, Cape Town where she is a mayor. Therefore, she is making all efforts for the people to know that what the party is bringing against her is not right. Mm. And politically, what does this say about the Democratic Alliance and its processes, the fact that the court found that it hadn't or it flouted its own constitution, especially with the clause of uh, the secession of membership? Yeah, I think what is, what is relevant, uh, like in, in the constitution of South Africa, very, very important is the public interest. Um, she has made it very, very clear that, okay, if you charge me or if you say I have done this or that, can you bring the evidence out? And for me, it looks like the leaders of the DA seems to have personal issues with her. And then they are using the party to use it as, 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 as a channel to, to actually make sure that, 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 that she's out. But what they need to understand is that they are a political party. They need the people. And then if you do not do things and make things very clear for the people to understand and also to, to see value in in this and eight, it, it becomes very, very difficult. This will really affect the party negatively. It will affect the party negatively because it seems like some people in, in, in the party have personalized issues with her. Mm. And I mean, the friends of Patricia DeLo uh, have come out saying that this will have a very negative impact on the Democratic Alliance. Uh, should it be that uh, Patricia DeLo, number one, uh, for whatever reason, is frustrated to the point where she leaves the Democratic Alliance or this whole thing is dragged out? Mr. Okonkwo, in your view, legally, again, what the Democratic Alliance has in terms of in its arsenal against Patricia DeLo, if she's saying that so far there hasn't been adequate uh, information, let alone evidence that has been brought forward against her? The DA feels they have a leg to stand. Therefore, now that the court has taken a ruling on one side, two things are outstanding for them to do. One, to challenge or appeal the judgment. Secondly, to provide irrefutable proof in terms of um, substantiated evidence that they have a case against her. Based, if they are not able to go through these hurdles, then it, it will have a very negative impact on the party. All right, uh, also joining us on the phone line, Solima Malazi, Member of Parliament, uh, DA Shadow Minister of Sports and Recreation. Mr. Malazi, thanks so much for your time. Just your re re initial reaction uh, to the court outcome today. Well, um, good evening, Cindy, and good evening to um, the panelists there. Um, what we would be doing as the Democratic Alliance is, in consideration of all the options that we have, uh, we'll also consider an appeal because we are of the view that the, ju the judgment fundamentally misinterprets how the um, Democratic Alliance Federal Legal Commission operates um, and what its powers are and who are the individuals that constitute that body. Uh, we believe that this judgment has far-reaching consequences on the ability of the party to hold its members accountable um, for their conduct and ensuring that they behave and conduct themselves in the manner that is consistent with the constitution of the DA. Why, why, why are you so confident that uh, perhaps the court will find in favor of your uh, prayer for, for an appeal, considering this was a full bench that had uh, made the ruling not only to pay legal fees, but also found that the actions of the party were unlawful? Well, the argument that it's a, 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 a full bench does not uh, negate 
um, the option that, you know, we have of an appeal. You know, um, the reason our judicial system provides um, for an appeal is for that particular reason that if you are unsatisfied about a ruling at the high court level, um, you know, um, of a judgment in particular, you can pursue an, 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 an appeal because we believe that the interpretation that they have, um, which they used to conclude um, on, you know, um, process with which um, that determination was made, very wrong. All right, uh, Rema Latsi, just before we let you go, one of our panelists, Dr. Guy, suggesting that uh, that uh, there is a personal vendetta, and this is something that Patricia DeLille herself had vehemently uh, brought up from time to time, saying that this has been a personal attack on her. Your response to that? Um, what the DA has done is to attempt to deal with this matter internally through the party structures by according uh, Patricia Delil each and every opportunity to pursue this matter internally. Um, even with regards to the report that would be before the court tomorrow, which was initiated by the party, um, when the um, panel um, reached out to the mayor to appear before to present her side, she refused to be part of that. So internally we have... Um, done everything possible to try and hold this matter internally. She has opted to go to the court as it's her right. And as it's our right, we have been compelled to respond and defend the integrity of the party in court. It is nothing personal in our view. It is about ensuring that, you know, um, the organization remains committed to ethical leadership, that the organization um, applies its laws equally towards everyone who is a member of the organization, regardless of their stature or perceived popularity in society. Okay, will you also reinstate the internal inquiry uh, while the court, met, uh, the court matter is uh, uh, in tandem? Um, the, 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 the internal, yes. Uh, I mean, you know, that is um, what the court was dealing with was with procedural issues. You know, um, so it said that the FLC, uh, which is the Federal Legal Commission, um, was constituted, you know, improperly. We have an opportunity to reconstitute that um, so that, you know, the internal process of the party can proceed. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Solim Aladzi, Member of Parliament, DA Shadow Minister of Sports and Recreation. We join now by Paul Ngobeni, legal expert. Uh, thanks for your patience and good evening to you. Just your reaction uh, to the victory in favour of Patricia Delal and what it means uh, for the Democratic Alliance going forward. Uh, good evening, uh, Cindy. <clears throat> this is a unanimous uh, ruling of the full bench, as you earlier indicated. And I've listened to the DA shadow minister trying to outline the basis for any possible appeal uh, by the DA, and I don't see the, uh, the prospect of an appeal there. Uh, unfortunately, he chose to focus only on one reason uh, for the court's judgment in favor of DeLeo. The first reason that he didn't even touch was the fact that the DA failed to give uh, uh, Patricia DeLeo due process. Yes. They made a decision, adverse decision against her, without giving her an opportunity to respond or to even give evidence in mitigation. That in itself, uh, I, I don't see a court on appeal overturning a, a finding on such an elementary issue such as uh, procedural due process. Everybody knows that, even in... Uh, but, uh, the shop floors and trade unions and all of that, the, the opportunity to be heard. That's all, that's all that the court said. Okay, that's so next step, reason. should it fail at the uh, Supreme Court of Appeals, or rather the leave of appeal being granted in the first place, then uh, what, what's the next step for the DA? Well, they, they will... They, they are, they are, first of all, it will uh, suspend the court's uh, judgment, if they grant the leave to appeal, which means that uh, while that matter is pending, they can go through their other internal processes, maybe reconstitute the panel, as uh, your speaker was saying, and perhaps even give her, uh, Mr. Leo, the opportunity to submit evidence in mitigation or to address the issues that they, 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 they raised on the merits. Mr. Ngobeni, we're just getting feedback on your line. I'm sorry for that. We're going to have to let you go and end it there. Paul Ngobeni, a legal expert, thanks so much for joining us. And very briefly, Azania, Azania Matiwane, a, a, a friend of uh, Patricia Dalal member, good evening to you and thanks so much for joining us. And I'm sure you are absolutely elated uh, with the victory in court. Of course, we, we are.
very excited by the victory in court today, Cindy. But one thing that uh, the spokesperson of DA is in denial of, that is a denial that is very monumental to an extent that I can equate it with that of a, of, of a Nyawope addict that cannot see that the, the, the walls of Jericho have fallen. The first thing that is happening is that the DA has run out of options. Uh, they have pursued the options of internal disciplinary hearing, which they have failed to, 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 to do successfully. Two, when they were taken in, into court, they complained about the fact that uh, Patricia Dilil had, uh, had already indicated that she was going to be resigning. Now, the issue of the cessation clauses that uh, we've termed the Dilil clauses, Partly the reason why they were invoked in their national conference was to well, they were constructed so that they can be able to fire Patricia Dillon. Unfortunately, they have failed the constitutional master because South Africa is a constitutional democracy that the DA is supposed to be understanding. The other thing that the DA is failing to, 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 to acknowledge is the fact that they have been trying all, all sorts of things, including the motion of no confidence that James Self has, uh, uh, and, and, and Stan Hazen have mentioned today that they will be invoking once again. It has failed. And we know that and we are confident that it's going to be failing again in, 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 in the city. The reality here is that the DA is failing to deal with issues of diversity within its ranks. The DA has taken a position to expand its, its, its recruitment strategy so that they can be able to include people of color. Now, the issue that is happening is that the DA is imploding by virtue that it cannot be able to deal with the issues of, of, of diversity, which is an element that it has never had, because by its founding, the DA has always been a white minor, a minority interest organization that is protecting minority interests. So now that it has to encompass everyone else, now it's starting to implode and starting to crack on the seams because it has never taken a position and firmly a, a policy position around the issues of diversity. Mr. Matiwane, so, thank you so much. We're going to have to leave it there. I'm sorry we're out of time. And that's Azania Matiwane from Friends of Patricia Delal. Just closing comments, uh, Dr. Guy, and I'll come to you, Mr. Konkwo, in the sense that is this the end of the road, at least until the process has been completely ventilated in court, but that uh, the, the, the relationship has been severed between Patricia Delal and the DA? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's the only way, I mean, it's, it's, it's taking her out of the party the only way out. Are there no other option? Why are they insisting that she has to leave the party? You see, that is why I say that it's likely that some people are not happy with her personally. So what needs to happen is that she has made it several times. She said, no, bring out these issues. Can we work out things? But then it's like they, they are not ready. They feel like the only solution is to look. Politics is not is, is a contextual arithmetic thing. So they need to look into the context and say, what is the benefit of we sending her away? I mean, even if, if they can go to other areas, I mean, I mean, Mukukus, to, to look for votes, and then if, if, even if they are chased away, they still come back again to, to look for votes. So the vote of delay alone, it, I mean, it's something that is relevant. Beside that, she has her own supporters. So why then, why can't they look the interests of the party and say, for the sake of this party, let's allow this lady, let her tenure finish, and then we can see what to do next. Why are they insisting that the only way out is for her to go? If you were to put your head on the block, uh, Mr. Kwonkwa, would you say that uh, the uh, leave to appeal will not be granted? Either way, but you see, it's just like in a rescission of judgment. The defense, there has to be a strong defense. I don't see that here because the basis of application in granting this ruling was based on something that was very basic, which they neglected, which is basic procedures were not followed. So I don't understand. Maybe the Supreme Court of Appeal will come to a different conclusion. I doubt Therefore, what I would advise and suggest would be let, because the lawyers are going to, DA lawyers will study this and advise them. Whether they will take the advice is another thing. So if I were in their situation, I would call for a truce at this point to not further impact negatively the image of the party, considering that the election is around the corner. All right, we're going to leave it there. Thanks, gentlemen, for your time. And you at home for watching. We do take a quick ad break. And do stay with Afro Prime Time with me, Cindy Ma. We'll be back after this.